everybody to Framing 101. I'm Camilla Jennings. This is Sam Bowie. He's got over 20 years of professional experience with custom framing. And we're here today to kind of answer a lot of the common questions that we've gotten um, about how to frame your own pieces. So Sam, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Sam Bowie. I'm the Director of Retail Framing for Jerry's Autorama. We have 14 stores nationwide uh, that do framing. We have one in New York that doesn't, but uh, they do stretch canvases. And today, basically, I'm going to show you some simple steps to take ready-made frames, make them look really nice, uh, how you can customize those and go archival and uh, make them make them an archival custom job, but don't spend a lot of money doing it. So we're going to here to help you guys figure out how you can do it yourself or show you how we can have our framers do it for you. So. Right now, we're going to do what, a walkthrough around the floor, Camilla? Yeah, we're going to do a walkthrough. And just so you know, this is a six-part series, so make sure you check out all the videos. Please like, share, comment. Um, we'll have it out there on Facebook. Um, and if you stay near another Jerry's Arama, be sure to step in and introduce yourself to our frame shops there. We've got a ton of other framers just like Sam who are ready and willing to help you and answer questions and consultations are always free. Yep, absolutely. So real quick, I brought from home uh, everyone's idea of what a frame typically is. If you want to get a look at this beauty here, this is my um, sister and my niece. Um, <laughs> so you see, this is typically what you get from a store. This is something people often just kind of drop their art in but Sam I think you've got some better things to show us today. Yeah that's uh this is this is a mess. I mean <laughs> yeah. the first thing I noticed about what Camilla bought this is bought right off the shelf like that at a, at a competitor store and you see all the gaps in the frame right here. This is basically a ready-made El Cheapo frame so it's not very expensive but you do get what you pay for and and that would drive me nuts having these gaps in the corners uh, that just means that construction is not very good on this and so the more you take stuff out and put it in more than likely eventually this frame is going to fall completely apart completely apart Show me something better all right Miss Katie you want to take a walk down here in the aisles with us and folks we'll be right back and we'll finish up here at the table in just a few minutes all right so let's go down this aisle right here and we're going to show you a bunch of Jerry's frames or Jerry's proprietary items. Uh, these are um, studio frames. They're relatively new. One really nice thing about these guys, in case you want to show the corners here, it's a seamless corner. So most frames you see the little miter line, especially the, the one that I, um, Camilla bought in, you could see a gap in between them, which you're not supposed to. But these are actually finished complete on the corner, so you don't see the, the, um, the miter seam. Technically a closed corner frames. Closed corner frames in the true sense of the word are artisan frames that are hand gilded, hand carved, custom built. They're thousands of dollars. They take anywhere between two and three months to make. Uh, and then we don't have anything in the store right here to show you any of those. But this is kind of our version of a closed corner and they're simple. These just come in black and white uh, and all different standard sizes. Standard sizes range anywhere from 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 9 by 12, 14 by 18, 16 by 20, 18 by 24, 22 by 28, 24 by 30, and 24 by 36. So we have several. There'll be a quiz later. There'll be a quiz later, <laughs> yes. And there's several, several frames, uh, um, standard sizes. A lot of art standard sizes, and if that's the case, you can come in and buy any of these off the shelf, and I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. But occasionally somebody likes a frame on the shelf because it's not very expensive, but their art doesn't fit into it. We're going to show you how to remedy that as well. So if we want to continue down the aisle, Katie. These are what we call our open back frames. And by open back, meaning they're open. So they don't have any guts. All they are is the, the, the frame. Um, these guys are very inexpensive. What size do you have right here? That's a 11 by 14. 11 by 14, it's only 12 bucks. So it's, a, it's an inexpensive frame and you can get everything else that goes with it. We have glass and backing. We have pre-cut mats, which are right down here. And you can pick those out. Um, but these are all kind of random frames. Our warehouse gets a lot of the molding and links. And what they do is they cut it down, make standard sizes. They put them all on a pallet and ship it to all our stores. So there's really no rhyme or reason which ones the store receives but they, they do really well because they're affordable but they do require all the guts and components that make it all work so it's just the frame so keep that in mind that's why they're really inexpensive but we sell everything that you would need to complete your art if you had something that you wanted to fit in these and we just keep running down here 
And just real briefly, if you want to show, this is our OOC. This is all our framing hardware stuff. That's what you can get uh, for these open back frames. You can use all this hardware, which will help you put it all together. And we'll show you the glass and backings on a pass through here in a minute um, on the other things you'll need. So we're gonna make our way around to our plain air aisle, which is one of our most popular styles. You can see people here at the frame counter. They're all busy working right now, getting some artwork done. All right, so these are our plain air frames and Camilla has one right here. I'm sorry. These are all the same profile. They just come in various colors. So this is the gold one. We have black, we have mahogany, we have silver, and we're actually uh, developing a white one right now. It'll be the white plain air, and we got a white one that looks just like this, and we're gonna have a white one with a smooth black wooden liner, which will look really, really nice. And uh, But these are our plain air. These are one of our most popular frames, and they're good. You can put a three quarter inch canvas in here. It'll stick out the back of just a little bit but because of the width of the frame, and once you hang it on the wall, you will not be able to get your head close enough to see it sticking out. So these are perfect for three quarter inch canvas, paper art, matted art, glazing, and all that sort of stuff. And they're very affordable and very nice frames, actually. They're our most popular, or one of our most popular frames. And so these are our plain airs. We'll move on down to the uh, illusion frames. And I always make the joke, these aren't an illusion, they are real. <laughs> So these are illusion frames. These are called float frames, and the purpose of these is for strictly for canvases. Now I've seen people try to do other things with them, like try to frame it and have this as the face of the frame. You see the barcode, you see the corners, they don't realize that they did something wrong, so that's what we're here to educate you guys so you know what they're for. But the float frames are basically for canvas. This is a three quarter inch canvas, an abstract that somebody did for us, and that's how they fit into the frames. It's upside down. Is it? Oh. It's a landscape. It is a land. It's a, not a not an abstract. It's a landscape of a abstract of the country. Question. Um, yes. Is that uh, um, you said it's three quarters? This canvas is yes. So is the canvas a little bit inside or the frame? Uh, the piece flush with the frame? It's or? flush with the face of the frame. Yes, ma'am. And the way it's on the back, you see how it sits in there in the back like this. All these illusion frames come with hardware and they're called offset clips. They are half inch steps. They just look like little, uh, let's see, you wanna open up a pack of these somewhere? Do they call it a rabbit or something like that, a rabbit? This has a rabbit depth. It doesn't have a rabbit lip. So the rabbit depth on this one is basically just that little step right here. Right there. So it's very shallow, but the canvas extends past that to create that little rig, that little spacing. Uh -huh. I used to have to record something that, uh, you leave the canvas to be a little bit deaf because if you stuff them or something like that, not to touch another one. Right. We all know what I'm talking about. I believe so. This is it's, it's face. You're talking about having it flush with the face of the right. frame. Right. Yeah. This, uh, these are all the illusion frames. They come in two depths, uh, three quarter inch and one and a half. So one and a half inch canvas on the deeper ones, which looks like that. It'll be the canvas will be flush with the edge of that when it sits in there. And this is a three quarter inch, so you can see how it already is flush with it. And so you all can see the hardware. Something like that to, to, for us to buy? It actually they, they comes come with, with the frame. frame. Oh, yeah, they come in the box. Yep. Okay. And if you just pull I one of those. I need something like that to buy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we can buy them home. separately too. Yeah, and, and then when we walk by that Uka okay. with all that hardware stuff, that they're on there as well. And this is yeah, what's called an offset clip. And the way right. these guys work, and for something 16 by 20, you only need four of them. I got it. So yeah, it would sit like that. And you would just screw a screw in there and a screw into the stretcher bar and do it four times. And that holds everything in place. Yeah, these are really good. Um, they're minimal frames, so they let the art do the talking. They don't they don't take away from anything. And actually, this gold doesn't look too bad around. No, it actually looks pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that's how they work. And this, by the way, this canvas is really loose. I would I would restretch it if, if it was my canvas. We just found it in our studio. Just to use an example, this actually has the keys right here that can be hammered, and they separate and tighten it back up. I don't like using those because I've seen too many people try to do it, and the next thing you know, they shoot the hammer through the canvas, and then it's ruined. But uh, that's how these guys fit in there, and we'll move down to the gallery wood frames next. <laughs> so so far, Sam's showing us some frames that work really good for specific purposes. But today we want to show you one thing that's going to work well for everything. So we're going to pass our 
Valentina frames on yep. the way. We've got lots of awesome styles here on Country Chic. Yep. These are really popular styles right now, mm -hmm. that chalk painting with all the different colors. These are these are actually stains for raw wood, and Jerry's is actually, I'm developing um, ready-made raw woods right now. And then we're gonna be able to stain them. We're gonna have 40 different stains that we can use. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited about those coming in. All right, and now let's take a look at the gallery wood. We have one back. All right. These are our most popular frames that we have. There are gallery wood frames, and what's really good about these guys is that they have everything you pretty much need to put it together. So this is a little nine by twelve. It's in a looks like it's a mahogany. Has a turn button backing. And if you want to hold that, Camilla. Thank you. So the way we develop these is it has these two little grooves and the inner groove right here, the closest one to the rabbit lip, can lock in two mats, glass, paper art, you just drop the backing in, twist that, you're pretty much done. You do have to screw the uh, D-rings um, in there and run the wire across and I'll show you guys later how that works. But this can also accommodate a three quarter inch canvas. So I could just drop a canvas in there and that's what that outer groove is for. Drop a canvas in, drop the backing plate, twist it all around and it'll hold it in place, run your wire across, and you're done. Um, the smaller versions of these have the sawtooth hangers on them, so you, there's no need to screw the D-rings in. The bigger the frame, the heavier the art gets, and that's why we use D-rings and run a wire and hang it on a hook that way instead of just hanging it on a nail with the sawtooth because it has a little more um, support with a heavier this is piece. The sawtooth. Yeah, these little guys right here, yeah. And those just hang on a nail, and, um, but uh, the smaller ones have that because the art won't weigh enough to, to compromise. But anything bigger than the 8x10 is going to have hardware that you have to screw into the sides. Now, I will caution you guys when you do that, make sure you're very level and flush with the thing being inside this rail. And you'll see it when I do an example in a little while. You don't want it sticking over the outer edge or sticking too far in or anything like that. You want to make sure that it's on the wall and you don't see it on the side. So let's go ahead and see you show us. Okay, we'll do we'll do this one. So we're back over here at our little demo table. We're gonna take our wonderful abstract paint or landscape painting. I'm sorry. Oh, Olivia actually did it. It was a test. It was a test piece? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is why it's not stretched very, yeah. yeah. And that was a pre-done stretcher. So this is this is pre-stretched when whoever, when Olivia bought the canvas, it was already done that way. And that just shows you what a lot of paint will do to a pre-stretched canvas. So I think we were testing bit. really, there she was kind of scrubbing some stuff in, so she really was doing some damage on the canvas to stretch it out. Right, right. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and put the D-rings on this frame right here. So you would just run the wire through, and I'll show you all how to do that after I get through doing this. But basically, this is so easy. So we make sure we know which end is top. Straight down in there. Turn button backing. Let's get it in there. And, and this is in lieu, this is ready-made uh, backing in lieu of what we do in the custom framing. We run double stick tape all the way around here. We use a point driver to hold everything in, paper the back and put a sticker on it and make it look real nice. Um, but this is just kind of to show you guys how easy you can do it. The paper on the back really is just a dust cover, um, but this kind of does the same thing and it's gonna be against the wall, so you won't see it anyway. But basically that's all done. And I just dropped it in there, it's ready to go. And then for the wiring, I already put the D-rings on. You can see I kind of got a little too far in on this one. It wasn't, but it's not, at least it's hanging in this way and not that way, so you won't see it on the wall. This one actually got dead on. So it's kind of tricky sometimes to line it up, but not too bad. And I'm gonna use a, this is a number five wire, so it's a 25 pound wire, which is fine. And I'll just run it through one end. And in all the years I've framed and I've heard several people say, well, you got to do a knot like this, not like that, and that sort of thing. That's the knot I do. It is perfect for it, large pieces and small pieces. Of course, larger, heavier pieces, you'll use a thicker gauge wire. More than likely, it'll be a wider frame, so you'll have more support like that. And this is the, the part where you make it look really nice on the back. I don't know if you've guys seen the braided, the old braided wire. I hate that stuff because it frays out. It'll prick your finger. This is a Duracoat, it's a plastic coat. What's good about that is that it doesn't slip. 
and it looks a lot nicer when you uh, when you get your um, knot done. Now I give myself a little extra. I pull it tight, and then I like to go like this because you want it to. You don't want it too tight. If it's too tight on the wall and you got a hook, it'll kick out from the wall. So you want a little play in your wire. So I always just bend it up a little bit, then crimp just so I know that I got enough play in there that it will not kick out from the wall. So that's that's perfect right there. And then just do this little guy. I know it makes it look so easy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's He's it. He's only done it a few thousand times. So that's it right there. And when you go to hang this, and we're doing a fitting portion later to uh, one, I think episode five, I believe, is the fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll go into more detail about that. But um, when you hang it on the wall, I recommend using two hooks instead of doing this, because if you do it like that, you're a pendulum. So the frame can get out of square real easy or get crooked on the wall. If you do two hooks, it's kind of a trapezoid shape and it won't swing back and forth. And a lot of, and that's usually pretty good for walls that have maybe a heavy door against them. Someone opens and slams the door, those pictures get cockeyed. If you got them on a trapezoid, two hooks on the wall, then it won't do that. But basically that's just fitting a canvas into, a, uh, into a, one of our popular gallery wood frames very easy and uh i know katie said i make it look easy it is but you'll you'll have the wire you'll see people that twisted it and the wires like running up to here and it's got a lot of space i like to keep it nice and tight and nice and neat like that and it takes a little bit of a practice but not too much but that's it and i believe that's episode one right yeah, thank you so much sam so again this is episode sam one. we are yeah. in jerry's artorama of raleigh and stay tuned our next episode is going to be everything about glass um i've already learned a lot so i'm looking forward to what else you can yeah teach us. yeah i'm excited too yeah all right we'll see you in the next episode yep